Oye, mijita, ¿y cuándo vas a tener hijos? Oh, fuck, not this shit again. Um, la verdad no sé. Um, todo está bien caro ahorita, abuelita. ¿Y por qué no trabajas? Pues sí trabajo. ¿Ya eres graduada? ¿No piensas hacer algo con tu título? No es tan ¿Qué fa traes ahí? Oh. ¿Un tatuaje? Oh, no. ¿Por qué no te portas bien como tu hermana? Oh, my God. ¡Eres una malcriada! What the fuck? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first, the very, very, very first episode of Malcriada, Thoughts of a Girl in a Sick World. I'm your host, Citlalit Margarejo. Think of me as your friendly local baddie, here to talk about all things femme, fair, and feared. Thank you for being here. So... For those of you that don't speak Spanish, malcriada directly translates to wrongly raised girl. Don't listen to Google Translate. Like, they don't know what they're talking about. It's going to tell you, like, something whack. But uh, trust me, I, I speak Spanish. Malcriada is used for girls. Malcriado is used for boys. <laughs> they're very, very binary like that. <laughs> but... I would hear this word all the time when I was a little kid, when I was misbehaving usually, right? But one time, my mom was like screaming and lecturing me, calling me, uh, Malcriada, hija de tu madre! You know, all the insults in the book when you're a little misbehaving child or whatever. But then like something hit me and I was like, girl, like, you're my mom. Like, who raised me? You did. My parents. Why would this word offend me? Why are you using it, like, in a bad way towards me? You know what I mean? Like, it should offend y'all. Fuck yeah, I was raised wrong. I was taught how to act right in public. I was taught how to put on a good face in front of others. But I was raised to lie, to hurt, and to run. But look at me now. I'm kind of like not doing those things anymore. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, culturally, this word is used to shame young women into submission, to abide by a society that objectifies them. What a waste of a word. So, I decided to birth this podcast and name it Malcriada, Thoughts of a Girl in a Sick World. But before, you know, I go on about everything and talk about what it means to be a malcriada and all that shit, I feel like I should tell you a little bit more about myself. Let's, let's get to know each other. So, about me. Hello, my name is Itlali Melgarejo. And if that's too tough on your tongue, you guys can call me Z. Most people do. I think it's kind of cool, right? But um, it does give me butterf a little bit of butterflies when people say my name right. So bonus po points. Bonus points as fuck if you do. Sitlali, it's not that hard. Okay, it's a little hard, but like you'll get it. You'll get it. Um, But a little bit, I guess a little bit background on my name. Um, I struggled a lot having like, uh, uncommon name, I guess, in the U.S. Uh, first, I went um, by my first name in Mexico, back when I lived in Mexico. And when I moved to the U.S., uh, people just were like, huh? Like, how do you say that? So I went by my middle name instead. Um, I decided not to go by my middle name anymore. It was like a journey. I'll talk about it. I'll get all into it later. But I decided to, you know, what's my name? My first name. Like, why should I be offended by it? My great grandma, you know, basically me lo, me lo, me lo puso, right? 
so and it's a beautiful meaning a beautiful name beautiful word beautiful language uh it's beautiful and it my name means star my mom would say tu nombre significa uh that my great grandma would say that it meant tu eres itlali la estrella del amanecer the mo- the morning star um i think that has like ties to lucifer <laughs> Which, again, we will get into in later episodes. I have lots of things planned for this and for you guys and for this podcast. But back to my name. Yeah, like, I struggled a lot to get to be called um, Citlali and to just, you know, accept it and to just, like, introduce myself as Citlali. Um... But I love that I did, and I love my name, and I love a nickname. My nickname that's closer to my real name than my middle name. I don't care for my middle name. It's beautiful, but I don't care for it, you know? Um, yeah. So, a little bit of background of my ethnicities. I'm a Mexican and Peruvian. Mexican on my mom's side and Peruvian on my dad's side. But I've practically lived, practically uh, lived in the valley for all my life. So I live in the valley. This is a valley-based podcast. Puro pinche 956. All that shit. Okay? Yay. <laughs> um, what else? My education. Um, so you know that I'm not someone who's just talking out of their ass. Like, I'm educated. I have my bachelor's degree in political science. And I have a minor in philosophy. I went to UTRGV University of Texas. Rio Grande Valley. What's up? Vaqueros. Vaquero, 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 vaquero. And vaqueritas. And everyone. I love you, TRGB. Again, we'll get more into that later. Um, but yeah. And yeah, so yeah, I have my degree, my bachelor's. But now I'm a go-go dancer. Mm-hmm. Um I got into go-go dancing because my one of my best friends in the whole world put me on house music and EDM and all that stuff. I wasn't an EDM girl, house girl, never was, but I just didn't know, you know, good EDM. Like, the EDM that was created, the, the EDM, the house music and that was created, like, in ballrooms. It's ballroom culture, you know? Um, when I would think of EDM and... Uh, house and techno and all that stuff i would just think of like what skrillex but then like she introduced me to more uh music and it's literally just the most one of the most freeing music musics songs whatever that i've ever heard um it was just so freeing to me and we went to our first rave it was amazing uh just the community the environment um the the fashion the love the dance the art like the create the creativity the unity you know what i mean i loved it so much and we decided to be become go-go dancers so yeah we're go-go dancers here in the valley if anyone needs any go-go dancers hit us up hit us the fuck up because honestly like it's been kind of dry (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah so that's what i'm doing right now currently so but anyways enough about me now you guys know my background you know my name you know my my what i've studied i feel like you know what i do i feel like that's enough right yeah that's enough i feel like that's enough let's move on to what is a malcriada so I define malcriadas as women and femmes who go against all of bullshit standards within Latin American cultures. And not this is not to discredit Latino men's efforts, right? Okay. It's just that personally, where I live in, where here in the valley, where I'm from, um, I sounded so Texan right now. Here in the valley where I'm from. <laughs> um, I don't really see like other Latino men protecting women or femmes. Like, like 
enough for me to say, oh yeah, I can completely trust in my, my men, the men in my culture, in my community to protect me? No, I'm sorry. Is there a few that I know? Yeah, for sure. There's always going to be good people out there. But for the most part, be- because of the system that we live in, because of all the nasty patriarchal bullshit that we have, you know, been conditioned to absorb, it's not there, you know? That's safety for women, that's safety for the femmes, that's safety for the community. That community-based trust is just not as present as some people make it out to be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, like, I don't really see that that often because, I guess, I guess let's get into it, right? I feel like a lot of the men, most of the men, again, like I said, most, not all, obviously, they're kind of worried more about what other men will think of them. Like, all my girlfriends, like, are always complaining about how their boyfriends, like, don't prioritize them. They kind of, like, put their bros first. They put the game over them literally prioritize literally everything over their own girlfriend pero como quieran exigen nalgas Uh -uh. no señor Uh -uh. like sir you don't even know how to excite a woman i literally have so many ideas like it's not that hard um but yeah i don't really see that so that's why I made this podcast. I mean, I'm going to focus more on, you know, the women and femmes aspect of it. But let's get into, like, what that means. So I guess that's one of the first topics. Um, like, why do, what do I mean when I say women and femmes? Well, listen. <laughs> Gender is not real, guys. Guys, shh, shh, no, shh, wait, wait, shh, listen, shh, shh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know it's hard to scroll on your phone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know that when you hear something that isn't traditionally what you're used to, it's kind of like, okay, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, if the sky's blue, the sky's blue. The sky has been blue all my life. But is the sky blue? The sky's blue sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's orange. Sometimes it's pink. Shit, like, wasn't it, like, red in 2020? Like, it was in the world ending. Like, I don't know. Like, it's dark. It's black. Like, there's, like, even, like, yeah, it can be blue. You know what I mean? And I feel like um, the valley, like, I'm going to call, I'm going to call us out. Everyone. Like, yeah, like, we're very, we're, we're this is not a safe place for queer people you know what i mean like for the femmes for people who don't identify as like you know the typical genders the the binary you know what i mean but that doesn't mean it cannot be you know what i mean and a lot of that has to do with us making claiming our space and i guess me making this podcast is me claiming my space um i want this to be a safe space for everyone the valley is amazing i love the valley it's so rich there's so much culture here the food is amazing the people are kind um we just need to show up for each other more and i think we could do it we could do it yeah yeah but i'll get more into how people dislike the valley for weird reasons in another episode for now, yeah, that's what I define malcriadas, just women and femmes who go against all the bullshit in the world, and, like, Latinas, you know what I mean? Uh, Latinas, Latinx people, all of it, you know? Um, but what do I mean, like, by all the bullshit? Like, well, in Latino culture, and in, in, in Latin American culture, me, I'm speaking from a Mexican and Peruvian perspective because I've seen like both of these uh I guess trends or actions be repeated in both cultures 
it's just some fuck shit. Like, people are always trying to silence women. But we're always doing... Silence women and femmes. And we're always doing all the work. You know what I mean? Um, That's not fair. It's not fair at all. And we get called malcriadas for it. Like, what? Like, I'm challenging you. I'm questioning your lack of empathy lack of 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 like love towards you know like your your prójimos and you're just gonna tell me that i'm i'm misbehaving you're just gonna tell me that i was raised wrong that i'm a girl and i was raised wrong and i should just shut the fuck up no 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 like it's been enough and I feel like there's so many other girls who have been told, you're a pinche malcriada, you're a malcriada, da, 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 because you don't abide by what society, traditional society tells you you should abide for, like, by. There's so many girls that I know who are so interested in different things, but aren't allowed to explore that because they have to keep a certain image for their families. For their parents. Because, oh, immigrants. Yeah, we're all immigrants. My parents are immigrants. I'm an immigrant. We all came here because we're supposed to be do better for ourselves, quote unquote. Whatever that means. If you're not like a lawyer or a doctor, you failed. Like, if you're not like a anything that produces money, like at an insane amount, like, then you failed. If you can't provide for your whole family and can't take care of your parents and buy them their houses when you are already in your 30s, then you have failed, and you failed your parents, and all your parents did everything for nothing. Well, I think that's fucking bullshit. Why do I have to be something greater? According to you. According to you. According to our parents who don't see what we see as valuable for example i wanted to be an artist when i was little i loved art i loved creating any type of like creation i loved like i think that's beautiful and yeah don't get me wrong like there's beauty in so many other things like like in those professions that i mentioned like doctor and stuff like that like fuck I'm sure that's beautiful. You get to save lives. But lots of people who are doctors, I feel like a lot of them aren't happy. And a lot of them are in debt. (laughs) And that sucks. You know what I mean? Like, and the world, oh my God, the world is crumbling. Shh, shh, shh. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's crumbling. I'm really coming at you guys with a googly eye perspective if you haven't watched um, everything everywhere all at once go do that right now and then you'll get the reference Um, I'm really looking at everything through a googly eye perspective and maybe that's not what you want to hear right now and I get it. When I would hear that, I just want to shoot my brains out. (laughs) Like, shut up! But it's, it is a fucking crazy world out there. It's a sick, sick world. And here are my thoughts. (laughs) Here are the thoughts of a malcriada. Yeah. 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 Okay. So... Thank you for bearing with me. I don't know where really I was going with that. Um, I guess that's how podcasts work. How much are we doing on time? Ooh, perfect. All right. Well, I guess I could tell you guys what else you can expect from this podcast. I basically gave you the premise, but like, what really am I going to do? Like, what am I going to talk about? Who am I going to talk to? 
what are you gonna do z like what are you gonna do like tell us okay fine i'll tell you jesus well i'm gonna do interviews (laughs) i'm gonna interview local people i think that a lot of us in the valley don't really aren't really aware of how much of a community we have here um so i'm going to be looking for you know local maybe maybe some local heroes maybe people i consider as heroes maybe i'll I'll interview um strong women and femmes in the valley who are just doing it and fighting the big fight and doing being the good in the world i we should put out and those people deserve more coverage those people deserve to be documented and their stories deserve to be told so that's me doing that i'm also gonna have i guess a little bit of comedy of some sorts i don't know on purpose not on purpose (laughs) okay yes on purpose i want to make you laugh but um just segments you know what i mean like i have a few i don't want to give everything away but it's all ready trust trust i've put a lot of work into this I really want it to be well, and I just want to put out good content. I feel like so many things out there are, I don't want to say not genuine, but everything feels so quick. They want what they want, and they want it now, but they don't want to wait, right? So people just, but people don't care about that, so they just put out like whatever shitty content they have. They know people are going to watch it. Well, I know people are going to watch this anyway. So I'm going to make it really, really good for whoever watches it, okay? It's just me. I'm doing it by myself. I'm doing my, as of now, my own money. But if anyone wants to sponsor me, of course they can sponsor me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, but yeah. I want to put out good things, you know? Like, I'm going to put out poetry. I'm going to put out social analysis on here. So maybe some big sister advice. Um, obviously, taboo topics. Um, like, sex topics. You know what I mean? Like, I'm very sex positive. If you have sex, you have to be sex positive, babe. I think there's also so much to talk about regarding uh, that topic here in the valley. So we're going to talk a lot about that stuff. Um... I'm going to also do current events and stuff. So, yeah, this is all the things that I'm thinking about, right? And I'm going to do it. Y'all watch. I'm going to do it. I'm, I guess you could just say, like, I'm just like an artist, you know, in, in every way. And I want my content, whether it's my words or my art, my dance, my fashion or makeup, to inspire and motivate people like me to learn to live for themselves. I've recently had, I guess you, I guess you could say spiritual awakening, though I'm not like subscribed to any religion or anything like that. And I have so many thoughts and feelings, and I can only assume if I feel like this, everyone else must feel like this too. I used to think I could not escape like this ugly mindset that I had, and. I'm not going to lie, like, bad thoughts are always going to be there. I'm trying to learn how to be okay with that. And if you relate to the word malcriada, if you relate to being the older sister the parents take advantage of, if you relate experiencing this world as a woman, a femme, Chicana, Latine, an immigrant, the black sheep of the family, I want you to know that your life matters and you deserve to live a life as much as anyone else. And I know it's not easy, you know, for people like us. So let's make it easy for people like us, you know? Like, if people are going to listen, fuck it. Let's make the places around us nice. And let's get to know each other and let's just be a community, you know? I really, really, really want to do something great and yeah thank you so much for listening to the very first episode of malcriada thoughts of a girl in a sick world this is itlali your local buddy signing off